I know you wanted to kind of discuss, you had uh, about Chinese billionaires. I know this isn't Jack Ma, because I know we're not, you're not talking about Jack Ma, but. Who? No. Yeah, who, no. who are you talking about? No, I'm not going to comment about anybody who may or may not still be in a no. Chinese jail. Yes. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so um, so, what, so what's going on with the rich ones? Yeah, so this is interesting. Um, another article that was kind of kind of neat, and it struck me because we're in, you know, we are, we may be always in this, but we're in a political place right now where, you know, billionaires are a problem or billionaires should be paying more. There should be a billionaire's tax. Well, the interesting thing is um, America is not going, is not going to lead we're not only not leading in many other things, but we're no longer leading in billionaires. Um, there's an article, which I, let me see if I can share this. Oh, and, uh, and real quick, quick for everybody watching all the links uh, to any of the articles or things that were shared um, will be below. So I'll take care of y'all. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, here it is. This is, um, you know, I didn't pick this uh, website for any particular reason. It's just the first one that came up. Uh, so, you know, save save the the condemnation about Mr. Savage for somebody yeah, else. We're not interested but, in it. Yeah, I don't think he wrote this. Uh, no, and he didn't because this is the same Axios article I found before. But the interesting thing about this article is China's making billionaires much faster than we are. And the really interesting thing is they're making female billionaires much faster than any other place. Um, the thing that's neat about it is, you know, one, obviously they got more total billionaires now, 1,133 that we know of compared to the United States has only 716, but it's growing at a fast rate. Um, the, the thing that's sort of different about it is that we still have the most, we still have the biggest companies in terms of market power. So we have billionaires who are in charge of the most powerful companies in the world. Um, and, you know, we've got, I think, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and uh, Alphabet, Google are equivalent to 500 of the most valuable um, businesses in China. But what's interesting about this is if, you know, if the world is run by billionaires and you know, we, we talk, people have talked about the Bilderberg Group and it's considered a very Western, um, white European male dominated by billionaires from, um, you know, more liberals to conservatives. Well, that, that is maybe not true anymore and maybe not going to be true um, in the future. So how do you adjust to a world where, um, and I'm going to stop sharing here if I can. Did I stop? Did I stop sharing? Yeah, you could. Okay, sorry. Um, you know how do how do how do we adjust politically and economically to the reality that China that the billionaire class that we believe, you know, is in control of the world and behind everything is increasingly Chinese, is increasingly female. Um, I think I think I saw something like 66% of the female billionaires are Chinese and it's growing. Um, they're younger, they are in different fields. So most of most American billionaires today are in tech. Okay, or what you know would be traditionally referred to as tech, whereas in China they're in manufacturing and they're in newer industries. Um, so how does that shape the world? Uh, we know that biggest art sales recently have been to Chinese billionaires. Um, they're going to have different taste. They're going to have different goals. They're going to have different things that they believe in in terms of charitable uh, issues or political issues. And, and if it turns out that, you know, the U S begins to have fewer billionaires impacting the world, then what is sort of the, what is the, uh, the, 
the sort of result of that. Uh, if your if your political position is, you know, we have to tax the billion, you know, millionaires and billionaires are taking everything, um, and you, you're talking about the wrong billionaires. Um, I think that's going to have some impacts for the future. So it just struck me. It's a it's a small story. May, maybe it's not that big a deal, but you know, this is happening quicker and faster, and and I think it will have an impact in how we talk about the the income gap in, in the future. Well, well, I think really one of the things that it speaks to is that idea, whether it's now or whether it's at the beginning of that imperial decline that we have seen, right? There has been a superpower at the forefront for the past 70 years, right? And maybe things start to shift and you that's an unusual and contrarian way to recognize that shift, right? You know, yeah. you talk about, hey, this nation, I mean, I don't feel any way about it. I could care less. I'm nowhere close to becoming a billionaire, so I can't even fathom it. But if you look, <laughs> if if you look at another nation and th their companies are growing larger, that's it's just kind of that idea of maybe the we're seeing power shift, and that's just a contrarian way to note it. That's an that's an interesting thing to think about. I've never heard anybody kind of talk about that. That's a you know, but it makes also, sense. It's also an opportunity, you know, from a strict capitalist sense, right? If, if, if American billionaires become more cautious, um, or more reserved and, uh, you know, we, we're losing some of the older billionaires to age, you know, the people who have been influencing, um, politics in this country for a while, hey, you know, the Koch brothers, the Sheldon Adelsons, there's some other, other people. Well, so there are opportunities to determine what do these Chinese billionaires value? Um, is it, uh, you know, once you, is it yachts? Is it, you know, is it gaudy stuff? Is it um, land? Um, the biggest purchases in real estate in Australia, in California, you know, these the prices for homes that, that are ridiculous, you know, uh, sales have been ridiculous. Those have all been bought up primarily by Chinese investors. So, you know, it's one of these things to not to be concerned about, but to monitor because you know, you'd be talking about um, important real estate, um, important uh, whether it's in the beach or in valuable places like California, that's not owned by Americans. And that's going to affect all sorts of policies. So it's, it's just, again, something to keep an eye on. Um, and, uh, you know, no, it's, I don't know. It's, I think we could be billionaires if the dollar crashes. The name will be <laughs> Yeah, but we'll, we'll be able to buy just one Pop-Tart. So. Yeah, and they'll be Chinese. I wonder what the favorite flavor of Pop-Tart will be in China, because we'll have to know that. <laughs> it's going to be something I'm not happy about. So It'll be like wanna... purple, yeah, purple yam, purple. I don't want like to look, I don't, I don't wanna look into it, because I'm going to be upset. Right. All right, and um, then uh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, and did you, uh, I had one more quick one. Um, again, another another thing that was kind of all over the news um, due to the gas prices is the discussion yet again of a essentially a government stimulus, whether it comes from states or the Fed, um, related to an energy rebate. Okay. Uh, anywhere I've seen anywhere from $100 to $800 discussed. There are there are three primary representatives in the House of Repre in the House of Representatives who are talking about this. Um, Mike Thompson of California, John Larson of Connecticut, and Lauren Underwood of Illinois. I believe they're all Democrats, but don't don't hold me to that. Um, they're proposing something called the Gas Rebate Act of 2022. And the idea is that every American who qualifies would get a hundred dollar rebate per month with a hundred dollars for each dependent. Okay. So essentially, you know, if uh, now there's some different proposals, but essentially if you're a family of three, 
you get three hundred dollars. Okay. Right. Uh, so, but that's know, per month. Child is not of driving age. I don't know. What, that's you know, that yeah. was per month, though, right? Per month. Yeah. Yeah. So, was it wasn't twelve hundred dollars the first? I I it, I'm not sure. I'll have I have to double check this, but I think the first stimulus checks that they released was twelve hundred dollars. So you just yeah. ex extend that out. So that's a stimulus check, even if they stretched it out, right? Which is more palatable, um, probably. Uh, Literally, yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Not, I was just gonna say for people, I, I, I really, I really get tired of of them thinking, you know, thinking yeah. that they're all important. Because if any time that we wanted to, if enough people tell somebody to change their vote, they're gonna change it, right? So it's like, well, and just the you know, we look at the the thing we didn't call a stimulus, but which has been was paid out over the last several months was a child tax credit, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people were getting benefits. And I don't think they renewed it in this latest bill, but there's some discussion that that's going to come back on board. So again, it, it maybe it's just shifting it around. Um, but, you know, here, here's the, the impact of it. One is obviously they've gotten people now sort of used to the idea that we can, you know, do a, do a rebate or a, a voucher or a stimulus payment and that's not good that's no longer unusual um but gas was averaging four dollars a gallon at the beginning of march and now it's averaging over six so you know really quickly within a couple of weeks it's sort of taken off the other thing they're proposing um is uh representative defazio of oregon i think it's peter defazio He's proposing something called the Stop Gas Price Gouging Tax and Rebate Act. Um, there is, and you could see it if you, anybody who watches The Hill on uh, on YouTube, um, they they talked about this a few times. And later on, I, I want to do a, a, a discussion more in depth about the concept of price gouging and what it, what it really is. The different um, sides of it, right? Yeah, because it's, the the story again in tandem this week with this uh gas credit is that isn't it weird that gas prices go up or you know oil goes up in price and gas prices go up right away but oil dropped and i think oil dropped a couple days ago for a, for a minute and gas prices didn't go down right away and the response of the uh, oil companies is that, hey, it doesn't work like that. You know, we we just paid one price and that's the gas that's coming to your to the tanks. And so we, we got to charge you for that. But then the next batch of gas will be less. Um, but there is a discussion that happens a lot um, about price gouging. And I, I don't know that it's fair to call that price gouging per se. But again, we'll uh, hopefully I can discuss that more in detail. So there is. There is a, in addition to the things we've talked about, and we talked a bit about it with Josh recently, um, this idea that all the prices, price increases Americans are seeing are kind of somebody else's fault. Um, and uh, that's not, you know, there, there's some truth to that. But um, sorry, just to finish, the other proposals are being uh, in California. California lawmakers are talking about a $400 gas rebate proposal for every single taxpayer. Um, they're going to use nine. California supposedly has a $9 billion budget surplus. I don't know how they have that because I think if you ask people who left California, they would be very interested to know about that. Um, and essentially it's going to cover the 51.1 cent per gallon gas tax for a full year. So all they're really doing is instead of not charging you the gas tax, they're giving you 400 bucks and saying, hey, that's the gas tax uh, that we're charging you. Florida um, is thinking about uh, waiving the gas tax. I think some other states in the South have done it already. Um, and uh, so you're just seeing a couple of d things talked about, but this, this idea of stimulus checks, it, I think, is going to be with us for a long time. Um, and, you know, the idea of really all they're doing is giving you back your money. Right. But but, um, you know, um, maybe it'll be popular. 
um, maybe it will will work. Um, I, I'm not sure uh, how they'll budget for it because today the Biden administration admitted or came out and said that they they basically don't have the money for a fourth vaccine, and which is strange because it was supposed to be budgeted. So again, these are just things that these were some of the I, things that caught my attention this week uh, because they're more complicated than you think, um, and they're they're going to um, become important. Um, gas gas now in LA is over six dollars. I did see some pictures of seven dollars. I don't know if that's true. If that's I would expect it's in California. So yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's that that's interesting because you know what ultimately would be most beneficial to people in that sense is you know the reduction in their taxes. So that's what they're doing. They're not gonna present it as that. They'll they're presenting it as a way like, hey, look what we're doing for you, not what we've been taking away from you, which is very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean the we're going to have to, and again, we'll, uh, one of the things that uh, we have planned uh, is to get more into detail about energy prices and how they're based. And uh, I, I hope we can talk about energy, uh, electric vehicles and those things. But people are really, uh, and I'm not picking on the Hill, okay, uh, because I do, I, I watch them and they're, they're interesting, but I find it really interesting that uh, they had a discussion about how, you know, rising gas prices will make people buy electric vehicles. And at the same time, these are the, you know, they, they have the same people on who will say like, but Americans don't have any money. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's interesting. Right. So or nationalize, uh, Oh God, what's her name? Brianna Joy Gray. She used to work for, um, uh, Bernie Sanders. Um, you know, was had a little discussion about nationalizing oil industries, and you know they're they're not serious, but it's it's again to paint the picture that um, if, probably for the come, upcoming elections. And again, I'm not trying to be political, but I think it's pretty obvious that it's pointing out all the uh, cost, everything rising in price is somebody else's fault. Um, yeah, well, everybody, nobody wants to take the blame for rising costs, right? So for every everybody smart enough to realize, you know, everybody's got to kind of deflect that. So whatever it is, that's why they need to watch us and our <laughs> guests on Macromob so we can try to figure it out. I don't have the answer yet. You don't have the answer yet. We're, we're trying to get to the bottom of that. Oh, I have the answer. No. Oh, you have the answer? <laughs> I, think, uh, I think this was a, a pretty good for – you know, our, our first episode of our macro mob hits. And um, we're going to be releasing a video on all things food, really. Um, just kind of talking about fertilizer, what's going on with food prices. I did kind of want to give you guys a peek um, what's going on with food banks, uh, because you probably don't think about this. But of course, a lot of their costs are associated with rising transportation prices. So if you have the means, if you're out there, you know, think about trying to donate to your local food bank and also, you know, pay attention to kind of what's going on to the, the older citizens around you, the senior citizens. They're, they're the ones who can quickly be in a place of uh, food insecurity, right? Yeah. You know, you thought that's funny. You think feeding old people's funny? <laughs> no, <laughs> we, I thought we, I thought oh, when you snapped, I... you're like... They'd just be gone, you know. Oh, sorry, yeah, no. like you, you. It was very, it was very Thanos forceful. I was like, Jesus. yeah. I was, well, it's, I'm serious about this, but um, but, yeah. And I, I, I'm sure, you know, people. If people saw this, I know I did where I live. I mean, there were lines, uh, car lines for food, just a few months ago. It's going because on now. of the pandemic, and it's going on now because of price raises. So. You know, it, it's it, they're not separate incidences. So again, if you can help out your local food bank, and um, if people have some organizations that they want to um, alert our audience to, we'd be happy to have them. But 
you really can just look locally and um, think about the vulnerable people in your community that aren't going to necessarily ask for help. Yep, hundred percent. All right. Well, I think I think that was a good good way to wrap it up. Um, we appreciate y'all for watching us. Um, be looking out for you know our agriculture episode that's coming out soon. Until then, see you next time. Take care.